Hello everyone, Jeff here for Respawn Studios, back with episode 10 of my Diary of an Achievement Horror series. You'll see that my gamertag has changed. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they had the great gamertag purge of 2016, where they released over a million gamertags, and I was able to get Muggle. I'm a Harry Potter fanatic, so it was a really good feeling. But anyway, for the special 10th episode, I was originally going to do my 10 favorite achievements, but I thought that was too self-serving. So instead, I'm going to do 10 games that are pretty darn easy 1,000 gamer score. So an easy 10,000 gamer score for you to get to help you really raise your gamer score. Uh, the first one just came out on Tuesday of this past week. Um, so last day of May in 2016. It's called Fragments of Him. It costs $10, but you could beat the whole game in less than two hours. There's three optional achievements. Well, technically two, because you're going to get one the first time, but <laughs> easy 1,000 gamer score. You could very um, quickly uh, Google a, a guide for the optional ones, but it will kind of be obvious what they are too. <laughs> anyway, our second game is Roblox, which is a free-to-play game, so you don't have to pay anything ever, which is awesome. Um, you see the achievements are easy. It's play a game, rate a game. So every time you go in and play a game, just make sure you back out and rate one. Um, one of them is to play a game for one hour consecutively. I did it in the Slender game because that was kind of fun. Or I also really like the um, rolling ball, uh, like kind of Mario Kart thing where you just roll a ball. <laughs> that was fun. Um, to log in for 20 consecutive days, which is what I'm working toward now, you just have to get to the main menu. You don't even have to play a game, so that's pretty cool. Our third game is called Nero, Nothing Ever Remains Obscure. I believe this was also $10. None of these games cost over 20, which is also good. They're all um, indie or arcade games. This is an adventure puzzle story-driven game. It's mostly you walking around. The graphics are really cool and unique. Uh, the story is pretty awesome too. Um, you might have to look up a guide for some of the puzzles, but I um, just checked and there are some really good ones out there um, to make sure you get all the achievements in one playthrough to maximize your time. All right, our next game is The Park, one of my favorite games, probably my favorite game of 2016 right now, though technically it came out last year. It came out October on PC in 2015, but it's now on consoles. It's a horror game. It's first person. You play as a mom go going back into an amusement park after it's closed and trying to find them. There's a couple optional achievements, but I have guides as myself up on our YouTube channel if you want to check those out for it. Another easy uh, 1,000 gamer score, you'll probably get it in about 90 minutes. Uh, maybe it'll take you two playthroughs, so like two and a half hours, three hours. Okay, our next game is Enigmatis, the Ghost of Maple Creek. It is kind of a point-and-click classic-style adventure game with some seek-and-find puzzles. Uh, it's pretty simple, though. I didn't use any guides. I just did it on normal. There is an expert mode, so you might want to use a guide to ensure that you quickly solve the puzzles. You don't have to use any hints. Um, but yeah, pretty easy 1,000 gamer score. I just haven't done it on expert mode yet. So that was our first half, 500 gamer score already. So our closing half begins with Layers of Fear. Another absolutely amazing game. I um, saw this on PC because someone said it was the scariest game ever. And I watched someone's playthrough and <laughs> it was. It's pretty scary. And I love horror games. Um, I got it in the game preview version, but the final version of this game came out in February. And now you can get all the achievements in it. Most of them are easy. The hard ones are to get all of the endings, which is what I'm working toward right now. People didn't even know how to get it when, <laughs> when I um, was first playing through the game. All right, Gone Home is one of my all-time favorite games. If you haven't played this, you need to. <laughs> um, people like to be dicks and call it a walking simulator, but it is much more than that. It is one of the best stories ever told in video games or really anywhere. It's very powerful. It's very smart. It's engaging. It, again, will only take you like 90 minutes to two hours to beat. I think it cost $20. I would have paid $100 for this game for how um, high quality it is. I love Gone Home. Same thing with Life is Strange. Um, this was released as five different parts in 2015. This was my game of the year on Xbox last year. If you didn't check out my other videos where I unveiled those. But it's incredible. <laughs> uh, you play. It starts as like 
a high school drama simulator, it seems like. But then you find out that the girl you play as has time travel powers. There is a huge murder mystery that ends the first chapter. Uh, it's just incredible. <laughs> it's very relatable, even though there are these kind of like sci-fi over-the-top elements. It's very human. All of the achievements you see are just for taking optional photos. And you can actually see what they are before you get them. You see like um, silhouettes of them in your journal. And then again, you could of course always look up guides too. Um, I think I have guides up for some of them. I at least have my playthrough up for all of the parts of Life is Strange. Okay, our next game is Numa Breath of Life. This was one of the free games, so I hope you're able to grab it when it was free with Games with Gold. I think it is now back to $20, I want to say, which is kind of steep because, again, you see I played this for about 90 minutes, a little less than two hours maybe, but it's all puzzles. It's kind of funny. It's uh, voiced by this narrator that uh, is British and quite funny. <laughs> okay, just humorous. Uh, the puzzles can be hard, so, again, you might want to look up a guide, but it's a very enjoyable game. And, again, a 1,000 easy gamer score. I'm going to show another world. I absolutely hated this game. My friend Nick had to <laughs> play the game uh, for me because I just didn't like it. I got a couple of the achievements early on myself, but I just kept dying and just wasn't enjoying it. So I made him finish the game for me. Um, but all of them are pretty easy. I think one of the achievements is to die a hundred times. Some of them are just like turn around. One is to use a gun. One is to beat it. So they're pretty simple and again, the glory of the internet you could always look up a guide if you need to now i want to show two other bonus things telltale games if you haven't played them like the walking dead you should just because they're pretty good games but they got even better when they moved past walking dead in my opinion the game of thrones game i was worried um, when i was playing the first part but it got better and better and all of the achievements for the game of thrones telltale game are just for finishing it. You don't even have to go out of your way at all. So a thousand gamer score for $20. Uh, it's separated into five parts. All of the Telltale games are five chapters. Um, the other one I definitely suggest is The Wolf Among Us. It's based on the Fables comic series where it's like a gritty modern um, town where all fairy tale characters live together and you play as uh, the big bad wolf, the sheriff. And it's just really good. Most of the achievements are, again, just for finishing it, and then you can unlock some by getting running into all of the characters. You do that mostly by itself, but there's a couple optional things you could just go back and redo. All right, so there is my very quick guide to 10 awesome indie games. Pretty cheap. Some of them were free, um, but a very quick way to get 10,000 gamer score. Thank you very much for watching. This is Jeff from Respawn Studios, and I'll be back with more videos soon.